their parents went through 08 and they had to retire off the 08 crisis. Mm. So it's, well, my father used the 401k and he still had to, you know, no, do, you know, part-time work and I have to help out every now and then. Gotcha. That's why you, you decided to fill out the form. I'm assuming you, you don't want to do that to your kids, right? You, you know that pain and it's probably an uncomfortable feeling knowing you have to help your own parents who said they were going to have your back mm. forever and now you have to help them pay in a retirement. How do you think that would make your kid feel if you had to do that to him? That's good. That's good. That's a nugget. Hey, what is up? Welcome back to the CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. Today, we got an in-studio guest. Let me clue you in on this cat before I bring him in, man. I love this dude, okay? Um, Ocala, Florida. Uh, was in the Marines for seven years, right? Thank you for your service. Freaking love that, man. If you guys have ever been in the in the military and you're watching, let us know in comments below. I'd love to celebrate with you, man. Appreciate all you do. Um, also, got into insurance, um, was selling final expense in like a, like a smaller neighborhood. We'll get into that. He eventually wanted to elevate his practice, which I bet a lot of you do too, and now is selling about $100,000 every month through IULs. And has a bunch of software and technology that helps agents with that. So please welcome, this is going to be a ridiculously awesome episode, Mr. Rudy Geeson. Well, thank you for that uh, introduction. That was a, that was a lot. Oh. <laughs> it was a lot. A lot of it was just from memory too, you know. But dude, I appreciate you being here. You drove all the way from Ocala, Florida, which is crazy. Uh, I think you said like 18 hours. Yep, 18. This is a long flipping drive. Um, you actually went up to Fort Wood to like hang out, see some buddies before you came down. But that's where you were stationed at one point for like mm -hmm. four years, I think you said. Um, for those that don't know Rudy, man, like who is outside of just like this freaking rock star is selling IUL and it helping other agents sell IUL, who is Rudy Geeson? So I, w I would say very down to earth, very old fashioned, mm -hmm. um, was more or less uh, raised by like grandparents. So. Um, very old school mindset. So as soon as more or less I got right out of high school, military, um, I met my wife in uh, high school, mm. married her, um, two children. So very, very grounded. Not, uh, I'm not a partier. I'm not, I'm not one of those people who are going to go uh, pop bottles in the clubs. That's, that's not me by any means. Yeah. Um, not the, not the white, uh, the right wavelength for me. Mm -hmm. So just, just more down to earth. Um, honestly, just here to help and uh, mentor more people to elevate their income and get out of yes. that grind like most insurance agents are in right now. Totally. I can also attest this too, by the way, after hanging out with you, meeting you um, and talking over the last couple of months, like, dude, you're very down to earth, very chill, um, but also have a lot of passion, energy, and drive all at the same time, you know, which is cool. Um, where does, where do those things come from for you? So my drive and passion first off um in the insurance industry when i first came in i didn't really have an upline a mentor to really push me mm. uh to do great and really teach me the ropes i think the first the first 10 in homes that i did yeah i didn't even know what uh premium to sell so i was trying to sell the annual premium i had no oh, training you were just like pay up front i'll pay up front you have to and i i got one of them to do it oh wow but the thing is I went back and like I called my upline after I was done with the day because I had 10 appointments that day. I sat all of them. Don't know how, but I did. Dang. I pitched I pitched the good old, here's your yearly. And he goes, you need to go back to those homes. Go, What's wrong? He goes, we pitch monthly, not yearly. <laughs> and I was like, oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. I went back and made one sale. But okay. man, that was a it was a learning experience. So for me, my biggest thing is when agents get introduced into this field, I don't believe, uh, you know, m most of the agency they go into are like an MLM and they mm -hmm. just recruit, recruit, recruit. And they're not, you know, a hands-on approach. So I know the first couple months, it was a struggle for me to really get into it. I mean, I did like 5,000, uh, 7,000, 17, 23 for the first couple months in final expense. And I just know how that felt having 
a wife and a child at home mm -hmm. struggling to make that pay. And the motivation really just lies in not allowing anyone that I help to ever experience anything that I experience, it's always giving them a better experience and cultivating a better environment than what I came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where are you originally from? So I'm originally from, I was born in West Palm Beach, Florida. Ah. Then I went up to upstate New York for a few years, then went to Detroit, then went back up to New York. So um, very small town in New York, it was about 700 people. Got it. Graduated with 12 people in my class, very, wow. very small knit. Dude, I can relate to that. I actually had, I had six in mind at a little Christian school like an hour from here. Awesome. So no yeah. Joke. yeah, it's, it's yeah, very, yeah. it's very and Two of rare. them were homeschooled. Only four of us went to the actual school. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. Super rare, super small. Um, I also think too, though, like doing it that way and going to like a small school, um, actually gave me confidence, you know, in a weird, in a weird way. Like it was one point where we went to a bigger public school and I felt like I got lost in the crowd, you know, and I never liked that. Um, and so my sisters were like, wanted to go back to Christian school after going to, to a, uh, for like a, a quarter semester or whatever, uh, to public school and went back to Christian school. And, and I don't know, I just, it's interesting. Do you, do you, do you, what do you, what do you think about that? So um, I, Detroit and I also did, uh, ironically enough, a semester down in West Palm. So I was, that was probably in cool. a grade of, you know, a thousand people compared to up there 12. Um, you do get difference. lost in the crowd and the nice thing about those smaller schools, you get the one-on-one -on -one training mm. from the teacher. So you get to see the passion yep. that they have and why they're doing what they're doing. Um, at least that was my experience. So, yeah, yeah. um, I do believe there's more confidence that you're get, you know, you gain from having a smaller, um, group of individuals, most definitely like learning the ropes coming up through the grades yes. with, yes, because like, if anyone in my class was, you know, down or something, you knew right away. It wasn't like you were just going to totally. blend into the back. That It's not allowed. Yeah. Yeah. I could also see too, like, do you feel like you are able to do for agents at this point, what your teachers are able to do for you with more of that one-on-one -on -one and attention and help? Like you don't have thousands of agents quite yet that you're working with. So it actually makes sense if someone wanted to sell IUL and they were looking for a team, it almost makes sense to like get in early. They can be one of those guys, you know what I mean? Gals, whatever, and like grow. What, mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on that? So, um, and I, I don't have thousands yet. Yeah. Um, I have 33 and each one of them got a, has gotten a hands-on training approach from awesome. me. There's not, you couldn't go to any of them and not know, yeah. you know, that I taught them the way of doing it. Now, um, the nice thing about that is, is it, you don't get lost as a CEO. You, you're right. just not just a, a figurehead. You're in the weeds with them and they know that if they give you a phone call, you're going to be able to answer the question that they have and they don't have to get, you know, yes. wired to the next person, to the next person and right. hope, you know, they're going to know the answers. It's no, it's, it's a one-stop shop. If there's anything that you need, I most definitely can answer that conversation, answer that yeah. question on the spot. Yeah. You've, you, you've done it. You've been around it as I'm shooting on my Instagram story at the moment in the studio uh, with Keith Chase and also Mr. Rudy G. Um, you mentioned hands-on approach, though. When you're talking about hands-on approach, um, also, since I mentioned Instagram, go follow us both on Instagram. His is at IUL Guru, and mine is at Cody.Askins because he is a freaking guru of IUL. Go follow him, okay? Um, what do you mean by hands-on approach for your agents when you say that? Yeah, so um, the way I had to learn IULs, whew, uh, it, it was a little rough when I when I went into it. Only the uh, you know the, the older individuals, the 60, 70 year olds who've been in this field for 20, 30 years, those were really the only teachers that I could go find, and there was such a disconnect. Yeah. On what I know they the people teach. you're talking about, by the way. Yeah. It, it's just it was rough. So I decided to take a. Do you feel like it was like a good old boys club, so to speak? Yes. Yeah. It, it's you know you had to get vested into it. You mm. had to get chosen to be able to make that type of money, and coming from you know a small town that type of ordeal i believe everyone has the ability to have the same opportunity it's just who do correct. you surround yourself with correct and um, like that being you know a marine adapt and overcome my biggest thing that i 
did in the IUL space was to learn. I went and learned from the internal revenue code, the actual sections that say, mm. this is what a life insurance policy is. This is how you can loan against them. This is how they're structured. What are the different tests to actually make a life insurance policy? Once I did that, I then made a training system based off of the internal revenue code, just like these old cats, these uh, the older ones in the field have already done, but it's only in their head. Yeah. And they don't want to give out that information. So I broke that all down into a way to where any insurance agent, not, you know, you don't need to have a master's degree to understand the training system. It's A through Z broke down into basic steps because my biggest thing is an IUL can be a very complex. Yeah. S same thing with annuity. They can be complex on how you structure them, different index strategies. Like that's all the weeds. Like mm -hmm. you can, you can dive deep into that, but the product is such a basic concept yeah. and it needs to be taught that way as well. I agree. And all the ins and outs gets taught as you sell off the basic concepts. Yeah. If that makes sense. So it makes perfect sense. I don't have, you know, when I say hands on, I personally do eight hours of instruction with every individual of mine. Wow. So I break down what an IUL is, how to structure the IULs, how to actually prospect, how to sell to the, how to sell to them and how to actually do a deep discovery to where you find out their whys in their problems and not just sell them a product and sell them a death benefit. Yeah. I, I, I do want to jump to like the training system and software and some of the things you're doing. Um, before we go there, like um, what, from what ages were you in the military? So it was um, 18 to, geez, I can't even do math right now. Seven years, geez. 24-ish um, or something yeah, like that? 24. Yeah, 24. Yeah. 24, I got out. Um, at the beginning of COVID, actually. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, yeah, maybe closer to four years ago. Yeah, yeah. So maybe 23, 24, something like yeah. that. Um, how was that experience like? And why'd you join? So um, ever since I was little, I was, I had the, the gung-ho mindset. I'm going to go be a Marine. I'm going to be a Marine. I can never tell you what exactly wow. that was. But when I was like three or four, there's videos of me saying, I'm going to be a Marine. Are so, you serious? Yeah. It's just, dude, well, I love once that. I have something in mind, yeah, I run with it. It has to go. It's funny how so many other people in life that end up doing something like that or they're successful in some way um, had that thought as a child and like wanted it much sooner in life than when they actually actualized it. Um, I've known since I was like 10 that I, or even before that I really wanted to speak when I grew up, you know, like I was just enamored by that. So it's funny how like something can get ingrained in us and we want it. And then we, you know, like, like as, a, like as an example, you know, um, you're the amount of, you know, you're doing a million bucks and like, you know, you're not even 30 yet, you know, like, um, did you see that in the future or was it just the military stuff along the so way? So inside the military, um, I had one of my buddies, uh, Colin. He, he's big into trading crypto and he mm. was actually like in that boom to where he was a millionaire inside of the military as Crazy. a sergeant with me. And it was like, whoa, it, it unlocked a different mindset to me that, well, that's cool. I need to start shifting focus. I always like, I come from a pretty poor background. So I knew right away financial literacy was going to be the difference between me making money or not. Yeah. So in the military, I learned and why I was in the military um, for two years um, before I got out, I helped my brother as his accountant, his uh, more or less his C, uh, CFO for his construction company. Mm. So I learned a lot about finances while I was in. And then what I did, because a lot of military are not that, you know, well educated on the subject either. I just took what I learned and taught it to my platoons. So it got that love of teaching mm. to come out. So I knew as soon as I left there, I was going to go into some type of education, some type of speaking to be able to um, capitalize on giving back the amount of information that I've learned. It's awesome. It's crazy. Uh, I love that. And, and how important is it? Like Colin, as an example, in the military opened your mind to the financial world a little bit. How important is it for 
agents to get around people that can also help open up their mind too. Oh, it's, it's huge. The It's shocking. One little thing, one little nugget, one little sentence can be the difference between unlocking a whole new you. Yeah. And when you can find people who only want to find those nuggets all day, every day, yeah, you start to enter a, a part of your life, just growth. And then you're just never satisfied. You're always trying to find that next nugget <laughs> and that next nugget. So surrounding yourself around people who want to achieve what you want or already achieved what you want is it's pivotal that you need to have it. If not, you're going to be stuck in your own ways. And that's when, you know, a lot of, I see it a lot with agents, they're surrounded themselves with, let's just say family members who are, you know, not the positive feedback yeah. or maybe they're negative individuals are always complaining doubting them yep. and it starts to rub off on them even though they want to move forward and get better i always hear no i'm ready to take the step i'm ready to take the step and then i'll ask a couple questions and ne negativity will come out and i'm like but are you really ready to move mm. that's good that's good how many what percentage of agents do you talk to who are just naturally negative initially oh 75 percent like it's, it's a, a shocking like there's a it is amazing. It, it is. Um, a lot of people speak negativity in this space. Do we even realize that we're doing it, you think? No, I, it, it, it's subconscious. Yeah. Um, but it's the moment where you start to pay attention to the words you say mm -hmm. when you start to actually make some impact. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, so, so, so Colin, open in your mind. You're in the military. How did you find insurance and financial services? So... <laughs> Ironically enough, I was in high school before all this. I was uh, I went to a vocational school mm. for welding, and I got my certificate. Once I got out of the military, I thought, oh, well, welders, you make 40, 50 bucks an hour. That's not too bad. No. Um, I was welding on sky rises, making $18 an hour. And with my medical from the military, because I hurt my back, mm. they wouldn't cover it. So I was welding 30 stories up with no health care. So, um, goodness <laughs> gracious, bro. Um, I was already on the wits in like, okay, I, I need something like I've got a kid at home. I got a wife. If I fall, yeah. I'm done. This is, this ain't it. One of my buddies that I actually served with my, up, my original upline, um, he reached out and he's like, I got this opportunity hmm. and I think you'll do really good at it. Um, you be your own boss. I was like, say no less. I don't know what it is, but I'm good. I, yeah. I just don't want to work for someone. And I definitely don't want to be 60 stories up trying to weld to make no. 18 hours. Like that's crazy. $18 an hour. That's, that's not crazy. worth it. It's crazy. Jeez, Louise. That's not a lot of money. That's no, wild. No, I, th I thought with my welding certification, I was going to get a lot more. But the thing is, traveling, week. <laughs> traveling is where you make the money. And the thing is, with a kid mm -hmm. and a wife, I wasn't ready to travel right away after traveling as much as I did in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Okay. So then you hear about it and he's like, Hey, I think you'd be good at this. What happens next? Um, oh man, I, I fell on my face hard. Uh, <laughs> really? Well, the, the first month I did 5,000, um, and it was just final expense. Dude, that's some term probably better than most people do though. <sighs> for for yeah. you, it's like, now you're looking back like a freaking terrible. Yeah, yeah right? exactly. And it was, there, I like, was, I was happy. Don't get me wrong, but I knew there was in the military. What a lot of people don't know is uh, I would say in the military, you probably have about 90% of lazy people. Mm. Now, a lot of people go, what, how, how is that possible? Well, the military is designed for you not to think it's designed for your, like your leadership to think not yeah. for you to think you're if you are just enlisted your job is to act yeah so everything's done for you so i knew when i got out i was like well this ain't done for me there's no training systems in place there's no mm. there's nothing he just threw me to the wolves and figure it out as you go go make money exactly and th that sounded good to me so i mean i went and learned how to make money but it was a lot of trial and error a lot of failing forward so first month it was you know, 5,000, second month seven, next month 17, then 23, and then I just averaged around 20, 25. Um, just solid by the way. Which for a year I was like, ah, this, this isn't 
this isn't it. This like it's the same conversations over and over again. Yeah, I'm getting real bored. Obviously, that there's mortgage protection you can go to, and there's just so many different ways you can spin off mortgage protection. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's an insane amount. Yes, um, but in the area I was in, even like it was more or less in COVID, and I was still doing door to door. Like I didn't wow. go to Telesell yet, so it was good thing you lived in Florida. Yeah, <laughs> I mean in Ocala, I mean we're. 20 minutes away from one of the biggest retirement communities in the world mm -hmm. inside of Ocala. We have on top of the world and stone Creek, which are just huge retirement communities. So if you wow. can get one lead to open up the gate, you can go door knock a century. Like mm. it's just, it's huge. That's cool. So I used to get kicked out of those places back oh, in the day. <laughs> have you been kicked out of some of those places? <laughs> I've been kicked out. Cops called everything. Jeez, but the thing is when there's no set system, or training system in there, I, I'm gonna figure it out. And I'm gonna go make money. I love that, man. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's. Um, what I've noticed about the, the, the people that do really well, and you can do really well without this. I think, I, but I think it's a to figuring out your own path. You can't do it without some creativity. And you, my dad's always said, dude, Cody's just naturally really creative. But it's funny. I told myself eight years ago, like I'm not creative, and I'm 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 an and I'm an idiot. You know what I mean? Like I, seven, eight, nine years ago, I was like. I'm not really creative. I'd look in the mirror and be like, yeah, you're not really smart, bro. And, but I, but you were really creative. Like you, you were like, dude, I don't love what I'm doing, but I like the money. I like being my boss. Maybe there's a better way to also enjoy what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I think you found it with IUL, you know, but. Oh, yes. So, so you were selling, yeah, you're saying, and, and you love it. You can tell, like, it, it challenges you too. Like, I think a lot of agents get bored. Yes. The, the nice thing about the IUL space is every client's different because even yeah. if someone is looking for a retirement, which most people are, mm -hmm. but it's the challenges and goals with their family that you're trying to align the product to and understand, well, hey, this is a software engineer who, yeah. you know, has nothing in place and he's 50. Okay. Yep. okay. Yep. Or you could turn around and you could be talking to a 33 year old who has 15,000 in a 401k and just took a dip in, you know, 2022 and he's like, I lost half of it. Yeah. What do I do? So there, it's just, you're always getting a new type of avatar, new type of person, um, new That's type of cool. story. You really don't, you may get some new stories, but you don't get a, the avatar doesn't change that much in final expense. Like they're on social security disability and Medicaid or just low income in general. And they have never planned in their 65 life. plus. Yeah. And they want to plan maybe if you can convince them to plan a little, you know, and put away a little bit of money. Um, yeah. I, yeah. What one thing I like about what you do is you seem to be helping, you seem to be trying to help the everyday working person plan for their retirement versus a lot of people that focus on your space, just focus on the highest net worth individuals. What's you, your opinion on that? Am, am I sizing you up correct? Oh, no, you, you, you 100%. So most individuals in this space, and I hate hearing it, I don't know how many prospects I talk to, they're like, I talked to another agent and he said I couldn't do anything unless I do a thousand dollars a month. Wow. And it's like, dude, I, I don't even pay it. I pay like six, 700 bucks a month in IUL. I don't even pay a thousand. Yeah. And it's like, uh, who are you targeting? Yeah. Like you're only going after the fortune 500 CEO. It's like, you're trying to get your one or two sales a year and you're good, you know, work bare minimum. Um, there's just that middle American market mm -hmm. that can benefit from the IULs and not just IULs, but that you know, the annuities as well. It's just the, the indexed products that people think y your prospect needs to be highly educated, highly, um, you know, net worth is high to be able to sell them these type of products, be able to help out their families. And it's just not, not right at all. Mm -hmm. When you can bundle together something they already need, life insurance, with a product that just provides them income into the future, mm. if you structure it correctly, it, it's, it's just, you, you a, explain a, this so simply, by the way, like, you know what I mean? And I think it's also because, and I mean, this is a compliment. Like you're not the smartest dude in the world. Nope. You just work hard, but you also are a teacher at heart and you can explain things in a way that people get it. Like, dude, I have conversations with people at IUL and I leave the conversation like, what did I just learn? What did I just hear? I'm so freaking confused. That's how it used to feel. Mm -hmm. We talk, we talk a bunch now and I'm like, dude, I get it. It. It's like, it ain't that complicated. No, and that's uh, what I like to uh, say with my agents as well. We're gonna break it down into the most basic structures. Mm. 
and we're going to build from there because it can get confusing yeah. if you make it confusing as the agent for sure but how many agents um what what what, what advice would you give to the agent because i know that i already know the answer i was going to ask i'm like i'm not going to ask it what what advice would you give to the agent that's that's um they got to know everything before they do anything and they're like just really like super you know maybe not even analytical but like they're the people that um analysis paralysis they want to study everything before they make any calls <laughs> so one of the biggest things i do see is well hey i'm messing with the retirement now i need to become a retirement specialist no you don't no you do not do you think the company if you call the company right now that's selling the product mm -hmm. their information specialist can't answer half the questions mm. so if the insurance company is willing to position themselves and do that you should if you have a good upline you have a good system what i tell my agents is if you mess up an illustration you mess up a client's you know portfolio for some type of reason you've got 30 days mm. to fix it and the thing is i review every single illustration that goes in That's so i know and it gives my um, agents the ability to go into it without having to go i need to know everything yeah. you don't need to know everything you need to know the basics how to sell the product, how to actually figure out what the problem on hand is. Yeah. Once you can do that, all the rest will follow suit. You just need to understand those two first things. After that, that's why you have me. You don't need to be that, you know, the person to understand everything. Uh, what's an index strategy? Yeah. Oh, um, call, buy, op. Like, you don't need to know anything. You just need to understand, hey, I want to help clients. I want to make this amount of money because I know it's possible. I see these older individuals mm -hmm. in these industries making millions in this. How can I get started? It's keeping everything as basic as possible yep. and leaving the complex stuff to an upline or wait until you get into it yourself, meaning you make a sale to where you need to learn that information. That's yep. when it's I make it relevant to the agent. Which makes a ton of sense. How much do you make on average per sale, you think? What would you say? So my average agent right this second is 5,400 per deal. Wow. Now, dude, I love that yeah. because most of the agents are, are, are that are selling final expense are making like three to 600 bucks a deal, you know, like, yeah. And I you just got to write an insane amount of them. You know, it's crazy. 5,400 bucks. Okay. Now I'm gonna do something I would normally, I'm going to wait, normally I wait till the end on this, but I'm going to do it now because we've been going 26 minutes and there's gonna be some people that are like, Hey, uh, I want to talk to this guy. Um, can, can they, are you okay if they shoot you a text? Yeah, I, I would actually prefer it. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm old fashioned in the sense I'd rather you just give me a phone call so I can just talk to you. Totally. Um, I get a thousand texts a day. And it. It's just going to get buried. Yep. So if they would like to give me a call, you just want to give me. Let's do it. Okay. Give them your cell phone. That's, um, great. That's a good idea. 352-598-7419. And honestly, I pick that thing up 24 seven. If someone awesome. calls me, I, I have a rule. If someone calls me, I got to answer it. Cause as I tell my agents, if you don't answer your phone, you, you're not going to answer money. Mm. So that's awesome. I love that. I appreciate that. So if you're like, Hey dude, I like this cat. I want to talk to him. I need help. I want to sell bigger deals. And I don't, don't want to complicate this thing. And I, you know, whatever I want to stop selling small stuff and then shoot him a text, man. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to go back to is I think you've got a lot of restore tools and resources to help mm -hmm. agents in different ways. Um, why have you put so much time and energy into creating all these different things that agents can like just plug into and go to work now? Yeah. So in the beginning, um, my upline, bless his soul. I'm glad that he got me into the industry. Um, but I'm also, I'm happy for all the lessons that I learned, mm -hmm. the hard lessons that I learned along the way. To have resources available to you to answer any question is, it just takes that stress off the agent. Yeah. That, that extra stress that gets put there of, oh, I don't know that unknown. Mm. My agents don't have to deal with that. And, and to be honest, I, I actually learned how to code just to be able to build a system for my guys to be able to quote, be able to answer um, you know, out of the amount of sales that I've done, I've, I've put together the 26 most frequently asked questions and they're on that software mm. to where the agents can just go click and it's word for word how I would answer the question. 
That's amazing. And then there's quoting That's on there. That's brilliant because people can literally re- like put that on a f- like say it back and forth, learn it, hear it, pick it up, put it on a flashcard, repeat it a bunch, whatever, and then like boom, they're ready. That's and cool. it's all basic. None of it is you know heavy terminology to confuse the clients. It's it's meant to <laughs> which hit I think the a lot of people American do. Market. By the way, a lot of people try to confuse the freak out of people. Yes, they try to use terminology and, you know, different sayings to, you know, make themselves look like the expert, but all they do is confuse the client. Yeah. When confused, if you just confused mind doesn't take action. No, not in the IUL space. What I've definitely noticed is the more you just try to talk about the product, you just try to, you know, um, there's a lot to do with IULs. So if you try to tell the client A through Z about everything, you're going to have two, three, four, five follow-ups yeah. because you just too much information to them. So just to be able to pinpoint the one why, why they're on the phone with you, what the problem is, and only make it about the problem yeah. and to make it as simple as possible, if you frame it correctly in the beginning, you don't need to use big fancy terminology. You're going to lose a lot of people. Yeah. You, you need to be able to make it available for the middle American market to go. That makes sense. Yeah simple not oh i'm confused i need more questions what's an index strategy <laughs> like ah uh, yeah you we got five to pick from which one did you want to do the s p 500 barclays you're like uh what the heck's barclays I oh i know that you is. don't know what an index is okay well it's just it's like oh geez now we're into a, a ginormous discussion about now i'm financially educating you yeah when i can do that on the back end so more or less what i teach my agents is you find the problem you find the why isolate it then make the product fix the problem get them into the product and then once they get the product in the mail because everyone gets a nice big old package that's where the magic happens because that's when we jump back on a zoom call and educate them about what they have Mm. but there's no sense of educating someone on a product that they don't have that's good you got a lot of wasted time there and a lot of wasted prospects that are getting confused yeah, yeah, about yeah. something they don't have. True. Very confused. Uh, what else do you have that, that is a resource? You got the training, like the training videos slash course, mm-hmm. right? That can help agents, your agents. Um, th- do they have to be on your team to get access to all this? I know we talked about this before, but. So my agents, uh, th- there are a couple things that are custom to my agents. Cool. Like my, my agents have custom lead funnels that they have just for IULs. Mm. Um, so they're getting, you know, real time leads into where they can, you know, hit them quick. That's good. Um, I use go high level. So nice. Uh, everything is very systemized and I can, you know, duplicate anything for any agent. So they have all the text drips, all the email drips, everything is there for them. That's, that's awesome. more or less custom to the agency. That's huge. So that's actually included inside the GHL system is all the, all the pre templated oh, text yes. and emails and all that. Wow. Mm-hmm. Most people have, like, they come to me, they're like, ah, I got to write all these. I don't know what to freak to say. No. Um, I, that's my cool. top sales agent and myself sat down and revamped all of them about four weeks ago. I had them all done for about a year, but we revamped them to be more modernized for now. That's awesome. Um, and then, so that, that's more or less just specialized to my agents. Okay. But for the public, I have IULtool.com and it is an IUL hub to where um, I only have a, the few companies that we work with right now um, on there. Uh, Mutual of Omaha is one of the big companies that I use. Mm -hmm. And I have a custom quoting software on there to where Mm -hmm. you don't have to use uh, WinFlex and take 15, 20 (laughs) minutes or hours. Or most people have to send off a quote request to wait a day or two to get a proposal back. Yes. And then they're selling entirely off proposal too, which confuses me. Which... That's ironically enough most of the individuals i'd say about 75 percent of the people um we can get over the hump without having to do illustrations yeah. do we still do the illustrations 100 percent, 100 percent legally you have to yeah but most of the time we can get them to pull the trigger simply off of solving their why mm-hmm. vice dumping down a whole bunch of information yeah and, and, and before I continue, do, do you do you look for, when you're talking to a client, do you look for, is there a budget they want to set aside for retirement? Is there an amount of income they want to create? Like what angle do you take as far as like so what to offer them? The the angle that I take, honestly, it, it, it differs. But when I talk about 
my discovery, I'm really trying to dig into, is it retirement income? Is it generational wealth? Or is it becoming their own bank? And becoming their own bank is a 50-50 a because if they're trying to become their own bank immediately, like right off the bat in the first year, an IUL isn't really the scenario. Right. The whole life is gonna be fixing that. Yeah. But if they wanna have access to their money year five, year 10, and have that concept of being their own bank and getting you know one, two points more than a whole life, that makes sense. So I figure out which category they're in. Retirement solutions, generational wealth, or becoming your own bank. Once I have that, then it's deep diving, just like we do in you know final expense. Okay, Miss Mary, um, you said you had a nephew. What, what would happen if, you know, God forbid, you you wouldn't be able to, you know, come home tomorrow and he was mm. the one who had to be stuck with the bills? How would he be able to deal with that? So just as we do there, that has to be correlated to the IUL space. So for retirement, awesome. So what are you currently using for retirement? Is that a 401k? Is that an IRA? Can kind of walk me through that scenario. Can you, you know, kind of break that down so I can get a bird eyes view to where this product could actually fit? Because the last thing I want to do is sit here 15, 20 minutes, talk to you about a product that doesn't make sense for you. And then simply get them to go into it. Now, what I always like to do is I like to touch on the parent situation when it's retirement. It's okay, awesome. So your retirement, you might just have your foot in the door, you have a 401k. So what got you into the 401k? Why did you go with the traditional retirement account? Well, that's what my job said. Well, that's most people's example. Of, okay, so if you don't mind me asking, how, how did your parents retire? What does that look like? Do you have to help them at all? Do you have to, you know, more or less uh, help pay for the bills or did they retire with a 401k and everything went good? Because most individuals I speak to, you know, 30, 40s right now, their parents went through 08 and they had to retire off the 08 crisis. Mm. So it's, well, my father used the 401k and he still had to, you know, do, you know, part-time work and I have to help out every now and then. Gotcha. That's why you, you decided to fill out the form. I'm assuming you don't wanna do that to your kids, right? You, you know that pain, and it's probably an uncomfortable feeling knowing you have to help your own parents who said they were gonna have your back mm. forever, and now you have to help them pay in a retirement. How do you think that would make your kid feel if you had to do that to him? That's good. That's good, that's a nugget. And I deep dive that way to where I actually have a problem I'm solving now. Mm -hmm. Now it's not just a problem. Now I attached emotion yeah. and we all know emotion is what actually gets people to pull the trigger. True. So if it's retirement, I push very heavy on what does the family situation look like? Have you ever had to help dive into your parents or, you know, grandparents? What does that look like? That type of ordeal. Um, That's good. So I always figure out those three, but I keep it simple. As soon as I have one of those three, I mean, generational wealth is selling life insurance. Yeah. There's nothing like if, if you come from the life insurance space, you know how to sell life insurance. Yeah. And then being your own bank, it's the same concept. I'm just asking, so how do you, you know, the normal banking system, what do you like and what don't you like about it? Mm. Everyone has a complaint about their bank. Yeah, true. I can't borrow money when I want to. Whenever I go take a loan, it's 8%. Or, well, if I borrow my money from my account, it's not me borrowing my money, it's me taking my money out of my account, then it goes to zero. Awesome, so. Then they charge me for not having money in it. <laughs> exactly, so if there was a way we could potentially not take away the banking system because un unfortunately it's an unnecessary evil. But if we could reposition where we save that money and it would give you the ability to not only touch, you know, 5,000 now, but 5,000 later on in the future because you technically never taken it out of your account, would that assist you to be able to use your 5,000 more than once? Mm, yeah. If that does, then becoming your own bank might make sense to you because a lot of, individuals that I help out with um, give a very real example. Uh, two weeks ago, I helped out a, um, a real estate investor. Every five years, he wanted 50,000 out of the account to reinvest. We put 200,000 in every five years, he's able to take 50,000 out that replenishes itself. Wow. So for the next 20 years, he's going to be able to invest into what four different properties and still have his total sitting there. That's awesome. And capital preservation to where if he did pass away, the death benefit's going to pay off. 
So that's smart. There's a, there's a bunch of different ways you can go into it and present it, but it's keeping it simple, finding the one problem and just isolating that and not going yeah. into all of the benefits of an IUL because there's a lot of them and they could fit into right. a lot of different situations. Totally. They definitely can. Um, so the, okay, the IUL tool.com, it has a custom quoting tool. What else does it get? I think so it something else. it has one of the biggest things uh, we struggle with as insurance producers is underwriting. Mm. It has five of the uh, top companies, uh, Mutual of Omaha, National Life Group. Um, why can't I think off the top of my head right now? Um, Transmerica, F and G, uh, and I think I just added Ethos. Okay. Uh, and Ameritas, North Got American it. as well. So seven, my bad. Got it. Seven. Um, you can go on there and simply type in diabetes, and it's going to tell you which company that it will go with. Mm, so it's got an underwriting tool in there. Too. Yes. That's so awesome. It just streamlines it to where it doesn't. When you're on the phone with a client, if you utilize the system, you can easily go. Okay, well. Uh, it has an IUL flow chart to where simplified issued, non-medical, medical. So most middle Americans are within the simplified issue. Yeah. But it gives a flow chart and allows you to quickly be able to underwrite in a matter of seconds, vice taking days, waiting for the companies, waiting for a quoting, uh, a quote to come back from your advanced market team. Like, yeah. No, it should be at your hands. If not, if you're being an advisor selling these policies, you should know how to illustrate them yourself. And that's really uh, the illustrating portion is like the dinosaur in this industry. No one knows how to do it. Yeah. But that's why when I said in the beginning, I do eight hours, half of it is just on the quoting software. Mm. It's getting them confident to know, hey, look, here's three different ways to illustrate the same policy. Let your client pick from which one they want to. Instead of just going, you take this because I think that's good for you. No. Yeah. Give the client the decision and then I guarantee you get some referrals. <laughs> for sure. And most people don't actually give them, uh, the client options either. They're just like, yeah, I, I like that. I, I've always kind of sold that way too. Um, uh, anything else on the training system, lead funnel, GHL system, IULtool.com? Anything else you want to talk about like with what you're doing for agents or for, for not your agents either way? Um. Man, there's there's so much there. I could just it's talk a lot, for days. Stuff, especially learning how to code software and everything else. I'm like, I'm super impressed by that. Um, that's just a. I got tired of not having all my answers in one spot. And go high level is like making different web pages and stuff. It's mm -hmm. it's fun and all, and it can be done. But I have that entrepreneurial mindset to where um, I have three different companies. I have the insurance agency, the lead company, and also the mm, software. Nice. To where it's more or less, a, I'm in-house on all of it. And the nice thing is, is not one person, I don't task out the things. If my agents has a questions on any of those three, yeah, I'm the expert on each one of them. Got it. It's not, you know, you have to go jump around and find that person. It's right. one shop stop for That's everything. Cool. I love that. Uh, well, dude, you're selling, man, you're selling a ton of IUL. Um, I think one of the angles I wanted to take before we wrap is, um, like what is someone capable of doing? Like break down, like, do you help them write 40 grand a month in IUL and you give them the formula? Like, what does that look like? So the formula, honestly, because of the space, it is rapidly changing. And when I first came into it, I thought 40K, 50K a month was impressive. Mm -hmm. I'm at the point now to where I have an agent of mine trying to go for 600,000 in a single month. And that's simply just because if you look at the lead flow in the average deal, if an agent gets 300 leads a week and he has an appointment setter and that appointment setter can get him 60 appointments mm. and only 45 of those show and the dude can close at a 50% rate, he's looking down the barrel 75 to 100 G's a week. It's awesome. So yeah, the right. possibility is very, very large in this industry. And honestly, I'm just trying to break new caps. Yeah. Yeah. You are too by doing that. Yeah. I like the formula. Broke it down. 300 leads, 60 appointments, 45 show. And are those phone or Zoom? Um, so that that's a mixture of them. I, I'm a strong believer of giving the client the decision. Now, Got it. 
there's softwares that we use uh, that we use I, I have not made this um that we use when we're on telesales to where if we want to show the client our screen to show them an illustration on the spot mm -hmm. we send them it's a crank wheel you simply just send them a link they don't need to have any type of uh software downloaded and they simply can see your screen got it and see you on That's like cool. that moment That's so cool. when you ever have that issue like oh i have to give you my social yeah one second let me give you this link link open do you see the application i'm filling out this is why i need your social mutual omaha is asking for it that's good very easy to pinpoint good. and go okay hey look i'm a real person you see what i'm doing on my screen i'm not just you know a tele agent you know just trying to incense what everyone believes scam you for your information no, yeah. i'm filling out an actual application you can see it on your screen let's move forward that's awesome i love that dude what, what else what else should we mention anything else before we um before we, before we close today man this has been so freaking educational man i want to i want to hear from you guys what you've enjoyed about today's episode with rudy the iul guru um dude i appreciate all you're doing for the iul space like i think it's such an impressive space i think it's going to keep blowing up i think there's going to be a bunch of agents that are selling other stuff that start to give this more of a look yeah it's uh the last thing i'd have is it's a lot simpler than what people think mm -hmm. a lot of people are in their own headspace oh it's you know to make a million dollars you, yeah. you have to be such a top tier individual. It's everyone can learn how to produce a million dollars. And in the IUL space, all you have to do is have the right teacher. If you have the right teacher, the right resources, the right lead source, mm. you're going to be able to achieve what you want to. Now that might be 20,000 in the first month, 40, 45, 50, the next, and then move forward. But the thing is I have agents who are just part time and they sell three, four policies a month and still make 15, 20 K instead of working, you know, those grinding hours, 60 hours a week, door knocking with final expense, mm -hmm. trying and hoping they make that type of money. Yeah. So it's, it's allowed for individuals to really be your own person. If you're that high achiever and you want to achieve, you know, three, four 500 K in a single month, we can help you. But if you're also that type of person who wants to go, I want to stay in insurance, but final expense is just too much of a grind. Mm -hmm. We can also help you just make 20, 30,000 and only sell five, six policies a month to where you can have that time back with your family that a lot of agents are looking for after grinding three, four, five years and not getting to what they want. 100% they are. Dude, what an amazing freaking interview, bro. Appreciate you driving all the way from Ocala, Florida to hang out for the day and shoot content in the studio with us. Um, thanks for letting us help you and thanks for letting us share your story with the rest of the industry. I appreciate it. You're a beast, brother. Okay, give them your phone number one more time in case they want to text yes, you. Yes, it's uh, 352 598 7419. Boom. I love it. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys for hanging out on the Power Player Podcast, man. We just went for literally uh, really close to 50 minutes, 47 minutes or so. Um, phenomenal episode. Ton of good value. He dropped some amazing nuggets. Like if I look, think back, like he said certain questions and phrases and things that I would totally rewind, write down, implement into your IUL cells. If you are looking for some additional tools to use, you can go to IULtool.com to learn more about what Rudy's doing there. You can shoot him a text. Heck, you could work with him. You could do whatever you want because guess what? It's your life. You know, so thanks for hanging out on the Power Player Podcast. Go follow Rudy G, man, Rudy Geeson. Love what he's doing at IUL Guru on IG. And we'll see you on the next episode. Adios. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. I'm so excited for today's CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. We got a special guest. He is back on the channel talking about how to sell life insurance from home. Here's what I, well, here's what I love about this person. Yeah, I'm telling you, this will be the, one of the best.